Visitor checking. Oh, perfect. We're just fishing. Yeah, go straight. Visitors and deliveries. Yeah, yeah, we are delivering the bass treats. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel today. It is myself and Ryan rigged out here. We're rocking the jerk baits at pond number one. Already got one fish so far, and I think we're about to make a move. We're gonna do some pond hopping today throughout the city of Plano and surrounding areas. Uh, our next stop is actually a pond we've never hit before. Not sure if it's accessible, but we fin to find out. I've got a jerk bait tied on for the clear water, and I got a saucy swimmer with an underspin for a little bit more stand conditions and a whole lot of tackle in the backpack. So we'll see what we can't get into, throw some tips out in the mix, and try and get on some fish on this beautiful Friday afternoon. Or is it not Friday? I don't even know what day it is. It is Friday the 5th, ladies and gents. Let's go ahead and try and get on some fishies. First few casts, y'all starting things off with the jerk bait in the city. Shallow diving, junior scout water is pretty clear. Kind of a shad coloration. See if we can get the first bite. Ooh, here comes that sunshine. Get some nice flash in the water with this thing. Draw them in from a little further away, I bet. I'm giving it long pauses too. Make sure that thing just sits there, suspends down in the water. Give them time to come over and eat it. What up? Hey. <laughs> How you doing? What you got? Man. What you got tied on? A uh, little rattling net. Oh. Kind of working like a jerk bait for no reason, but it, it looks pretty, pretty saucy, man. I've got some stuff in my backpack too if you want to tie something different on. I have a, I got a slew of goodies. I don't know if you brought some extra tackle, but look, if they don't hit a finesse jerk bait, there's something wrong. <laughs> but sometimes it takes me half an hour here. I don't know. You kind of get, it's not even like I find them in a certain spot. It's just like after the first bite, then boom, boom, boom. I seem to. Yeah, it's like the time of day or something is right. I don't know. Oh, there we go. First one. First one on the jerk bait out in the middle, y'all. Sick. Junior Scout. White in color. What we got here? It's uh, it's feeling like a little guy, but... Oh, he's not that bad. Not half bad. First one in the city, ladies and gents. I'm talking about right here in the middle of the shops and dining. He's having a good old time thrashing, too. Lunchtime, huh? We hit him. What is it? 3.13 in the afternoon. Nothing crazy. We're not hitting the sunrise or the sunset bite. But there you go, y'all. Junior Scout dives three to five feet. Absolutely perfect. There's like two feet of depth right off this ledge, and then it quickly cuts out to like maybe five, eight feet. So got the first one of the day. Nice city bass. We will see you, bud. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to cast left. Um, I might have one. Oh, oh no, I do. No, I do. It don't matter. They're, they're going to walk get hit. Don't let me walk off with it. Oh, I don't care. I got plenty. Going for fish number two, ladies and gents. Look at all the goodies. What should I tie on next? Check out what we have. We might do some pond hopping today, too, so stick around because you might see some new stuff in new areas of Plano, Texas, and surrounding areas that you ain't seen before. We're going to cover the city. We got time today. Right across the street, if these gates are open, which I think they might be. All right, y'all, we are in the heart of the city as stated but we're making a move we are going across the street i'll see you there he's saying that the spot looks a little dicey oh visitor check-in visitors and deliveries yeah i go straight we are delivering the bass treats dude this place is sick do we swing it right it definitely looks like that's security right there, so I'm gonna swing a right. There's parking right here. We're good. I'm gonna show everyone just in case we get kicked out of here. Oh, dude, oh, this looks sick over here. Okay, Ryan's on his way over here. I'm gonna turn off the car. This pond looks sick, dude, and there's two of them in this uh, business's lot, so. It said visitors are welcome for delivery, so we're delivering the jerk baits today. Let's go. Very clear. A lot of aerators. Water has even more clarity than the last spot we were at. Oh my goodness. I am ready to cast. Just grab the saucy swimmer, mix things up for half a sec. Is this not the craziest little spot right here? Look at this. Oh, well, we know there's bass in here. Unfortunately for this guy. Oh no, that's not good. What happened there? God, this is one of the coolest city spots I have fished in a while. I mean, this is, this is cool. I'm switching things up. I'm going to go with a finesse jig, but the thing is it had a big crack and crawl on there and I want something a little bit more subtle. So I'm trying to find a soft plastic in here because I'm limited on what I brought with me. Here's a nice little exopod. Oh, wow. That looks spectacular. It's almost just like a hard sandy bottom. So a finesse jig 
in these colder water temps. I'm sure they're not too heated up yet. The water's been warming here, but I haven't, when I've been out on the boat, seen like above 50 degrees. These ponds get warmed up a little bit faster though, just because they're smaller bodies of water. And the temperatures down here in Texas, they've been fluctuating. Yesterday out of nowhere was 65 or something. So it's just, so the water has been warming a little bit. You'd think these fish might be a little bit more active, but we've kind of thrown the moving baits. So now I'm gonna slow it down and go on the bottom. Yes, sir. Have no, no fishing? Yeah, this is private property, man. Okay. Okay, let's go there then. Yeah. We got the boot. <laughs> I think we're at spot number three. We won't get kicked out of this one. This one's fine. So let's go ahead and get to casting. Ryan is uh, working on purchasing a new home right now. So he's got some mortgage details he's working out as we get down here and try and make a couple casts and beat him to the first fish. This is cool casting from up here because I can see the jerk bait, the whole retrieve. And so I know where to cast and I can see the edges of grass. So I'm casting right to the edges of grass. Basically in the darker areas of the pond, I'm popping it pretty rapidly to get it down as low as possible. And I'm letting it sit in those lower areas where those fish might be kind of buried deep in the thick grass. And then as I see, I'm getting close to the bank. I'm just kind of cranking it back in. So I'm just trying to work the deep pockets real fast. And from this vantage point and with my polarized glasses, I can really see this thing the whole time. So if the, if the white color that I'm seeing from the surface just disappears, a bass has got it so you know just kind of lean into it sometimes they grab it and come at you so you might not realize there's a bite on the jerk bait right off the bat it just varies each and every time a fish bites so you don't really set the hook with these little jerk baits and these small treble hooks those fish are gonna whip at this thing and probably hook themselves pretty good but you do want to just kind of lean in there bury that hook and bring that thing home Dang, we got some baby geese over here in the house. <laughs> Bunch of bullshit. Forget this place. Yeah. <laughs> Trash today. I'm thinking the bite's about to be fired. It's actually looking pretty dang delectable. Spot number four, five, probably five. Spot number five, I would say. Right off the street. It was not this clear last time. I'm gonna go over here and then pull a little doo 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 doo. -doo. Well, they are acting up to date. Oh, that's a healthy, healthy twig. Ryan's got a split, you guys. Be sure to check him out on Instagram and YouTubes. It will be in the description. He's out here throwing the sexy shad lipless to uh, end things off. What's this reel? This is a Cast King Crixus. It's hey, a hey. portable reel. Nice little teal color. It's one of the first ones I picked up to learn bait casting and uh, it works. You did a Cast King versus Versus Shimano, yeah. This is actually the casting that I used in that video, and it's pretty comparable as far as distance and I guess smoothness of the reel retrieve. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the interior of the reel, the components, uh, not really a comparison. But it's worth the money if you're learning how to use bait casters. I'd recommend it. It's only about 50, 60 bucks. Check Dang. It out. Yeah, he does a comparison video, so y'all have to check that out. He's got Cast Kings versus Shimano's on his channel. So. Give that a peep. I'm gonna switch things up and try and get more than one bass today for you guys. I'm debating on either going with the bluegill profile, which is probably the right choice, or the new Guggen Squad contender, which is kind of what I want to throw and catch something on. So, okay, y'all, sunset is now fast approaching. Ryan has just taken off, and I opted for the contender. Uh, I'm throwing it out on the jerk bait rod just because I figured I'd probably do that rather than that longer, uh, fast action tip rod that I've got with that jig on there. So. We're just going to throw it on here. If I get a big one, ooh, it's going to be a fun fight on this little rod. This is a medium with a moderate action taper. So you do want that moderate action. As far as the tip goes, this is great for treble hooks. But just the backbone and the size of fish that could potentially go after the contender swim bait is going to have me fighting them pretty good on this rod. So let's see what happens. I do want to cover some water, though. I walked around this way last time, so let's go on this side of the pond tonight. And we're just going to cover as much as we can before the sun actually sets and the GoPro can see no more. It's also getting a little chilly as the sun goes down, so I'm gonna try and stay active. I'm just gonna do a slow and steady retrieve. I actually wanna work this maybe a foot or two below the surface. So, you know, as it gets shallower by the bank, I'm gonna work it a little faster just to bring it up. 
but I want to get this down deep on the fish's level because chances are they're out in some deeper pockets. It's still very cold out. Colder water temps, so these fish usually kind of group up and hug in some deeper areas of these ponds, of the lakes. They start moving up around springtime as the water warms up. And I actually love the rate of fall on the contenders. I want to be able to know if I want to fish this thing lower, I can get it to do that in just a couple seconds and then start cranking it. And if I want to fish it right near the surface, all I do is just kind of cast and reel and I'm in good shape. It's got a crazy S swim with the multi joints here. This is the four and a half inch model and just that bone or shad color. So I got high hopes walking this thing. There's a good spot over here with some rock. Might be able to find us another fish tonight. There we go, got one, got one guys. I was not even expecting that. Oh wow, we got a fish. We got a fish. Oh God, the jig came loose and it's smacking me in the face. Got one on the junior contender. There we go. He's a young buck, but he is a bass boys. That was sick. We're about to find him. This might be the spot. There we go. Fish number two. It feels small. It feels real small. <laughs> I'm fine in the evening bite, Ryan, but you ain't missing too much since you left. <laughs> I just had to tag Ryan on Instagram. That's funny. This is uh, two fish now since he's had to split in like 15 minutes. We really hit like six pawns. And then here in the last 15 minutes, we link up with two back to back on the contender. Let's try and get some more though. This is about the speed I've been going when I get those bites on a 7-2 to one gear ratio reel. If you are using something like a five to one or a six to one, you might be able to crank it a little bit faster and you'd be bringing it in about the exact same speed I am right now, but that gear ratio helps kind of step it up or slow it down. I loosened up the tension knob as well, just a little bit. I have the brakes set on too, but uh, like two or three casts ago, basically right before I caught that fish, I loosened up the tension. That way I could pretty much cast this thing all the way across the pond and I might have loosened it just a hair too much because I got a bit of a backlash right there. You always want to pull it out until the line just comes off there nice and smooth and make sure that line goes back on the spool nice and tight. Otherwise, you'll just mess up future casts too if you don't make sure you kind of pinch the line as you bring in those bird's nests. And I bet you this thing is going to be down there close to the bottom, so this is going to be perfect. I'm just kind of give it a nice little pop in case it's on the bottom and i thought i even had a fish but no i must have we definitely got down in the grass that's why i felt a little bit of weight when i raised the rod tip so i'm gonna go to the left a little a little bit more this time now i'm applying more pressure with my thumb as i cast it that way i don't get that bird's nest so i didn't tighten up the tension at all but i did prevent the nest all right let's keep walking this thing this is good though for my confidence i have fished this pond probably three times and the, the last like two or three times i've come to this pond I've gotten skunked and every time you do that you're like okay why do I keep coming back why do I keep coming back <laughs> so at least getting on a couple fish tonight has me wanting to get back out here and throw some bigger baits since this is the 4.5 inch I'm sure I could get away with some bigger bigger stuff especially with the clarity here and maybe draw in some truly big bites at this location but who knows maybe it's only full of the little guys I believe so. I don't live here. I just stopped by for a minute, but uh, okay. I'm putting them back. Cool. Well, I have kids, and like, I'm wondering if I can bring them out and fish. I'm sure they frown we upon. Too, I'm so. sure they frown upon keeping them. Yeah, that's yeah. that's most of the neighborhoods, but usually catch and release is okay. All gravy. Cool. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Well, just since we've got a couple catches on it already, and to feed my curiosity, because I was debating on which one of these to go between and throw, I think I'm going to tie this guy on for a minute and see if the darker color gets their attention or maybe that bluegill profile uh, might attract a different type of fish and by type I mean size so at every pond at every lake things are going to vary day to day and while they seem to be going after this guy right here I'm going to be able to work this baby baby gill just about the same this kind of got a little bit of a crappie pattern I believe this is the crappie pattern at least you can grab this guy on Carl's bait and tackle linked in the description the contenders you can get uh, over there as well or guggensquad.com if you've got a Carl's Club membership it pays to grab the baits over there 
and if you don't you can save 10% on your Guggen Squad lures like that contender swim bait I just caught those last couple on at GuggenSquad.com with code Weston. I'm just gonna rig this Palomar nut and we'll be set. Here's kind of a comparison as far as the profile, a little longer and more slender, different color of course, much brighter. And then we've got the bull gill. I'm gonna try and get it out here before sunset. Let's try and finish strong guys. I have a strong feeling that this represents more of what is in this pond that these fish are eating. This probably looks more like the bluegill that are swimming around in here than that white colored contender. So this thing could get bit. It also feels a little bit, it feels a little bit heavier, maybe just because it's a taller profile, almost more dense. The swim is gonna be just about identical. It's gonna have that nice S wave. It's got, uh, it's multi-jointed, it's not a single joint. I'm just gonna kind of creep it slow. We're gonna see if I can hit the same kind of prime zone where I caught those last two. We probably got another 10 or 15 minutes. The sun has set and I am just waiting for light to fade. Yes, you can grab it at Walmart or online. I mean, it's quick and simple. So okay. I just get you one. We just moved from Ohio, so I don't know Did you? Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you that you'd probably never get asked, but it's safe to have one because when you do, you could get into some, some trouble. Yeah, it cost you a ticket, right? I'm sure they'd write you one. Yeah, right. yeah. Thanks, man. My pleasure. Oh god, I got hit on the drop. I got hit on the drop. What? This thing was just falling, and it's the biggest fish of the day. You can't even lie to me on that. I was not even bringing it in yet, y'all. Oh my gosh. And it's like a two plus. It might even be a three pounder. This is a joke. Absolutely joking. It's dogging. It is dogging. I mean, it's a fish, y'all. <laughs> there we go. I mean, it's a big one. That's like a three plus right there. We're going to put this guy on scale. I just don't want to break this rod, so I'm kind of letting him fight it out for a second. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Come on up here, bud. Oh, well, you know what? That is loosely troubled, I think. Ah. Yep, you're going to do. You will absolutely do. There we go. That's the biggest one I've caught out of here. Let's get that confidence up. Ladies and gents, thank you so much. That's the baby bull gill. Swim baits doing work tonight in the clear water. Would you believe it? Wow. A winter chunk, boys. Yes. Golly. Fish until sunset. Oh, dang. He was pinned, too. That one hook got him good, even though it was only one hook. How much are we looking at? Wow, guys, three pounds, 10 ounces, closing in on a four pounder this evening. Oh my gosh. Well, okay, three and a half. Let's, let's, let's not inflate the value here. A three and a half pounder to close out the night. My goodness, exactly what we're talking about. Give this fish a little breather. All right, one of my biggest pond fish of the year. Let's let her go. You ready, bud? You ready? Cruising. Nice sunset catch, guys. How sick. Okay, wow. Can that be replicated? Like, that does not normally happen on these hard body swim baits. It was just falling down to the bottom, probably in some weird way. It probably not even nose down. I felt a bite like I was tossing out a Texas rig or a jig. That was so crazy. To actually link up with that fish was pretty lucky as well. Because normally, unless these treble hooks are on the move, you might miss something like that. Absolutely insane, guys. Three and a half pounder. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to top that tonight and the light is really fading. So I'm gonna make a few more casts and I will catch up with you guys at the house. See you there. Max, I need the box. Can I get the box? Can I get the box? I need the box for the outro. All right, y'all, what an evening, man. Sometimes the patience pays off. You know, we were hopping around to those ponds and we were getting nothing but dinks, right, Max? Literally like three small fish, maybe it was four, I can't recall. And then we caught the big one at the last second. And believe me, I was ready to go. Absolutely freezing. Absolutely freezing last night. But it paid big with a three and a half pounder right out of the ponds. And a pond I haven't had much confidence in lately. And now I feel good throwing different baits in that area. And you'll be seeing us fish it again soon. So stay on the lookout. Subscribe if you're not already. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Peace out. <gasps>